again everybody it's Doris at DF Designs. I finally cranked up the heat in my apartment enough to get it up to 76 degrees now yay so I'm gonna do some resin today now I will put a link below the video I saw somebody do a geode um, her name is Deborah Smith art um, she's on YouTube and I'll put a link to her video below she did what she did them on a round one. Now I spent I think 30 minutes looking for my round ones and I couldn't find them. So I'm gonna do a geode on this. Now basically that that's my level. Basically, um oops, got too much, got too many cups there. Um basically I'm gonna use these stones. Whoops, that's gonna be upside down from Art Mines, um, or Ashland, I mean. I get them at Michael's. They're just clear, but I wanna do a geode that has some blues in it. So, I put some of the stones in a cup, and I've got some um, um, Dr. P.H. Martin's Iridescent Sequence Blue ink, and I'm just basically gonna probably fight it to open it there we go and I'm basically what she did was was she just she dyed her stones now I'm not going to pour that much in there because I don't have that many stones whoops so I just did oh, roughly two dropper fulls and then I'm gonna mix it up in the cup and that's going to give me some blue stones There you go. You can see that. Okay, now, I'm thinking, I don't want to do just this. I'm going to probably do this as lines, but I'm thinking of doing like a, a, a little triangle right here of the stones. Mm, I hope I got enough. Well, if it doesn't go that high, I'll just put more resin in. Okay. I probably didn't put enough stones in here, but that's okay. I can always make some more. Let me spread these out. I'm going to show you that you don't always need to make a mold for a geode. I loved, I loved her idea. Now, yeah, the ink is turning, is turning the um cam um canvas. Well, really, this is an MDF board. Uh, there they go everywhere Okay, I'm gonna need to do some more because I really want it to come out to about here This is an MDF board the first way I prepped it was I Sealed it um, with Minwax and then I had done um um, I think two coats of that sealed every edge because MDF just like any other wood air can leak up through the uh, unsealed wood and it will mess with your um, it'll mess with your resin and give you bubbles that will go on for days okay that's two dropper fulls I don't know if that's going to be the same shade we will find out in a minute mm, yeah it looks like it okay So basically, I'm just making a little shape with my glass that I colored. And trying to work on getting all of them out. And it doesn't matter if some of the blue gets over to the side because the resin will cover it up. I don't want it too high, but then I don't want it too low either. Now, to keep these in place, you're basically going to drizzle some clear resin on it. Okay. Eh, that looks like enough. I mean, I'm not going to get it. Well, I can try smoothing it out, smoothing out the shape a little bit. 
Okay, now, I got my resin already mixed up. So, I'm just going to take my stick and drizzle resin over this, which will hold, help hold them in place. Because the resin is going to go all through the stones, and it's basically going to stick it to the board. I use clear resin sometimes to put my little D-rings on the back of my tiles to keep them in place and stick them on. Because I'll tell you something, this resin is a lot stronger. Okay, where can I put that at? Is a lot stronger than any glue out there. Okay, now I've got um, five colors. And I want to leave a little bit of clear just in case I decide to do some more stones. So, I've got aluminum by just resin, titanium white by just resin, sky blue by just resin. Yeah, you can tell I'm hooked on just resin's colors. And uh, blue diamond by just resin. And then I also got one of their new glitters called lapis blue. I'll show you that in a minute because i got to open it before I put any glitter in the cup. And I'm almost positive I've got enough resin here. Okay, now first I'm going to put just a little dollop of the resin in there. I don't know how much of this glitter I'm going to need. It's pretty, it's pretty bright. I will say that about their new glitters. It's really, really bright. Okay. Tap it so whatever's in the lid doesn't come out. Okay. Isn't that, isn't that pretty? I love their colors. Okay. I'm going to do, I want to make sure it's it's more glittery than clear. So I did two, um, oh, it's two little mounds on the end of my stick. Okay. Now I'm going to add the rest of my, some more glitter, I mean, some more resin on top of it. Now it's not going to fly around. Yeah, I got too much resin, but that's okay. I've got shot glass mold. Hmm. Okay, I could use a little bit more resin in there. Maybe I won't, maybe I didn't make too much resin. Who knows? Okay. And I could use a little bit more in the cup for the blue diamond. Basically, I'm going to do this just like you would a round geode that's in a mold. I'm going to put the red, last of this in the white. Um... Basically, I'm going to do, instead of doing circles, I'm just going to do lines around what I just put out. I'll save just a little bit in case I want to put some more glass down. And move you over, move you over. And I can see right now I need more glitter. I don't want to use too much, but... I don't want to use too little either. Oh yeah, that looks a lot better. Because I wanted to do just the glitter in in a um in the clear because I want because if I put it in a color it may sink. And I may sprinkle some on top. Okay, here's my aluminum by just resin. If I can ever get it open. Okay, I hate these rubber gloves when I'm trying to, oh, there we go, when I'm trying to open something. And I did level off my table. I will, I will tell you, okay, um, because I hear a lot of people, and I should be responsible too. Um, you should always take safety precautions when you're doing this, okay? You should always um, 
wear a respirator. It's just, I've gotten so used to it, I have no problem needing a respirator. Okay, I'm mixing up the aluminum, and as I'm mixing it, I'm also getting rid of whatever pigment might have stayed on the stick, because it likes to do that. Okay. There's my aluminum. I'm thinking of going white aluminum and then the sky blue, the blue diamond, and then the glitter. And then starting all over if I've got room, which I should have room. Okay, here's my titanium white. Why don't I think about doing this before I turn on the camera? Because I don't think. Okay, I just, ah, I just do. Okay. I'm going to mix it up to make sure. And now I've managed to get white pigment all over my table. That's okay. This was the one I was using for alcohol inks. And after this one, it'll be watered up and thrown away. Okay, here's the sky blue by Just Resin. Ah! Well... Guess what? Let me let me see if I can mix it up enough. Okay, you know what? It must have been too cold in here. Well, maybe I can get it mixed up. Well, we will find out what it looks like. It looks just a little grainy. But, see, if I had opened it before I had um, done, um, started doing all this, I would have been able to see that and I could have put it in a warm bath. What you do is, is you put it in a, um, in a bowl or a flat bottom container and you only put it up to the, you only put the water up to the bottom of the lid. You put hot water in there. And then you give it like a warm bath. And then you take it out. You shake it up. I have managed to get pigment all over my gloves. So let me do my little alcohol rag. This is 91% alcohol. And this is just an old t-shirt rag. Um, go check your local thrift store. Um... To see if they sell bags of old t-shirts, you know, the ones that they can't sell to the, uh, that they don't want to sell to the public. And, um, I got a bag of them for, uh, $3. Oh, it was heavy. Must have had, uh, 12 or 14 t-shirts in there. And when you cut a regular adult size t-shirt into fourths, it will, um, and, and then fold up each fourth, it'll be a good rag for what you're doing. You just soak it with some, put some nine, a puddle of 91% alcohol on it. Okay, uh, let me try to keep these colors. In the order I want to pour them. Okay, I hope that that was mixed up enough. I mean, I will give it Next time, I, I'm going to put a big note right in front of my, in front of me, that says, open everything before you start the camera. That way I can check things like that, which I apologize that I didn't. Okay, let me see. I hope that's enough glitter. There's the aluminum, the two blues. And now the white. I'm getting the pigment that was stuck to the stick off. Oh man, it is warm. Oh, it's 77 degrees in here now. Oh, I hope it's not too hot. Well, it's a dry heat. That's at least, it's cold outside. I live in Wisconsin. It's cold outside. Okay, now I got all my colors. So now... Basically, what I had seen Deborah do 
Deborah, Deborah Smith Art. She just went around with little lines around this. Okay, there's the silver. Oh, that was a cut from the glass. And yeah, it's starting to leak off the side already. Oh no. Well, I want to work quick because I don't want it to spread out either. There's the white. Okay, the sky blue. I could probably speed this up, but I'm still not that good. Oops, that went into the thing, into the white. I'm still, still not that good with my editing skills. Hopefully, I have a friend that I'm going to go see in February that can help me a little bit with it. Hmm. I may have made the glass too thick. I don't know. The rocks. We will find out. Okay, now my glitter. Okay, now I'm going to go back with my aluminum. And you want to you want to pour fast because you don't want to have a too thick of a line. Now I'm going to go around that with my white. And basically, okay, I can't show you everything. She drew lines on it after after it dried, and I will do that tomorrow. Okay, white, the lighter blue. Ah, I'm on the white. Shoot. Well, it's not perfect, but you know what? In nature, geodes aren't perfect. Everything in nature's got little imperfections, which is okay. Because that's what makes them special and one of a kind. Okay, there's that blue. And then the glitter. It is so hot in here. I'm sweating out. I normally don't sweat when I'm sitting here. Okay. Whoops. Go back a little bit to fill that in. I will go in there with the stick and add where I might see little holes. Okay. Glitter. Silver. I'm getting close to the edge. I'm not going to be able to do too much more over here. Silver. Not gonna be able to white's gonna be the last color on this edge right here. I can see it. But I can still put some of the blues over here as I'm also filling in the top. Okay, the sky blue. Stop. Ha! Ah, okay. I was a little bit too quick handed with that. Smeared it. Okay, now the blue diamond. That's okay. I'll go over it with a little bit of, with stick with a little bit of white and hopefully cover up my boo boo. You know, I never said I was an expert at this. I'm learning just like everybody else. I'm just letting you watch me learn. And hopefully, you learn something from watching me. Okay. Not much of this glitter left. So, I'm going to make the glitter the last one over here. Okay. And I'm going to do the silver up here. Basically, there's not really any tilting involved with this. You don't want them to go all over the place. So basically, I made sure this was very super level. Okay. And let me see if I can fix that white spot that I accidentally got the blue in. 
a little bit. I'm able to fix it. Ah. Uh. Okay, um, I do want to put just a little bit of white down here because I didn't cover the whole corner. Okay, I really don't see a whole lot of holes. I want a little bit more white right here to separate the blue because the blue kind of went over the white almost all the way to the silver. Okay, to tell you the truth, um, well, one thing I did see her do, and I'm going to try it, she did take her sticks and go through them a little bit, not mixing the colors, just kind of, I guess, defining the lines is what she was doing. I got blue on that stick now, I don't want to stick it back in the white. And it kind of gives a little edge to it. Okay. Uh, I can see that I want to do a little bit to the blue. See, I scraped all the way down, but that's okay. Because it it's self-leveling. So the little furrow that I made, it got scraped. It closed up on itself okay well you know what let me pop my bubbles this was a short video today sorry about that all I'm gonna do now is just oh I don't believe I forgot to do that that little trick that I learned about when you turn your heat gun on blow it for or your torch or your hair dryer. Blow it for 10 seconds in a direction away from your piece. It kind of blows out any dust particles that might be in there. Well, I'm going to put just a little bit more clear on top of this. This is higher than the rest of it. But hopefully I have enough clear in there with the glass that keeps it from, well, we'll keep everything held together when it's all dry. That's another thing I'm going to be checking too because I'm not sure exactly how much I should have done. Okay, basically, I'll show you what I'm going to do with my leftovers. Okay, I got my little molds. Yeah, they're a little dirty. But basically, okay, first I'm going to put what I have left of the silver in here. I don't know if it's going to make a whole, a whole um, shot glass or not. Oh, I don't know if that's on camera. Wait a minute. Let me move it over just a little bit. Basically, you just, what I do is, is I just scrape it off. Try to get the first color down to the bottom. Okay, then the white. There's my white. And basically, you just want to pour it around the little center that's going to make the shot glass part. I mean, if some of it gets on top, that's okay, because that's going to be the inside of the shot glass. Because um, I, I need to get working on mine and finish them up. Um, because um, what I'm going to do with them is, is um, I'm going to clear coat them. I do have the MDS sheet for the uh, for the um, um, resin that I use, and with that, and I also have a link to something with the uh, I want to say it's the FDA, and the the day that I do 
oops, no, I need the lighter blue. The day that I do my um, video of how to make the, how to clear, how to uh, finish off the shot glasses after they come out of the mold, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to put a link below it. It basically is a government paper that says that resin can come in contact with food, okay? I hear noises. They're working on the apartment next to me. That's probably what I hear. There is, I, did, I had to do a lot of research to find it, but um, there is a government paper out there that tells you that you know what? I'm going to do the last of the glitter because I don't want the glitter. Oh, there's not much. I don't want the glitter to be on the bottom. Okay. Um, but anyway, like I was saying, I do have a sheet. It took a lot of research to find it. And I haven't looked at that website since November, but... Um, they give you a link to an updated version um, anytime that you um, go there. Um, and basically, it, it basically it's going to cover your behind if you sell your shot glasses. It's going to tell people that... Now, I, you can't vouch for the pigments, okay? But you, I can vouch for the clear coat that goes on the outside. Okay, when I get a chance, when I have some more colors, I'll fill that in with a darker solid color. Because, um, now you can put a little bit of clear in there. What the clear is going to do, it's going to push the resin away. But that'll fill in the, the gap a little bit. Another neat thing I found out about these... If you put just a little bit of resin, maybe not even a half inch worth of resin in the bottom and let it get hard and then you take it out, you got napkin rings. Hang on one second and I'll show you what I got one over here that looks like that. This is what it looks like in the bottom when you take, if you do just, just, what's that, maybe a quarter, three eighths of an inch worth of our resin in there. Oh, I got drips going on. I have got drips going on. I don't know what to do about that except get it into the dust freeze up. Oh, see, that's one thing I hate about these is Okay. Um, it'll be a while before I can show you what that looks like. Cause see, I just I have this mold over here, and I just fill up the cavities. And then when I've got all the cavities filled, basically I pop them out, and then I sand them, and then I clear coat them. And that's going to be a whole video all by itself. Looks like everything's trying to go that way. So I'm going to turn off the camera, and I will show you what it looks like tomorrow. Hopefully it doesn't all shift off of there. Um, so if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate every thumb that I see. Um, if you don't like my video, give it a thumbs down. I mean, and tell me why you don't like it, you know. Um, comment and share my videos. Even if you're just going to share it to show people what an... What a crazy woman I am. Um, if you haven't yet, subscribe. And when you hit the subscribe button, click the little bell behind it so you'll be notified of my upcoming videos. And I really thank you for watching. I thank you for all the support. I do get some comments, and I, you know, I'm pretty new at this, and I do thank you for that. Um, so anyway, I will see everybody tomorrow with hopefully another resin video and hopefully this looks like a geo tomorrow <laughs> anyway thank you so much for watching i appreciate every each and every one of you bye for now